Huh. Okay. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Pearson, and today I'm joined by the illustrious officer, officer, Lieutenant Cops. I'm not a lieutenant, honestly. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> and here comes a new challenger. After her long, long journey to the top of defeating the two other females that we have on the podcast, or lack thereof, we finally got a new one. So instead of saying we can't make a decision or we can't comment because we weren't born with vaginas, we have now fixed that problem. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the chaos of Raven. Hi, I'm a dick. There you go. I find it ironic she says that right when I said she had a vagina, but okay, moving on. All right, today's topics are a bit more non-linear than normal. Uh, for one thing, uh, we're going to start with a topic that I didn't actually write down in advance, but that's because I kind of don't really need to. Destiny 2, or lack thereof. All right, so as most of you may or may not know, the game that made more money than certain virtual console stores, by billions even, has come out with a sequel. However, the sequel, as good it is, as it's done, it has not even sold the same amount as its original counterpart. Now, I'm not saying it's because it's a worse game, because, one, well, I didn't play one or two, but a part of me feels like the main reasoning for a difference in sale may be because of, uh, well, in its country of origin, the economy, even though it's come out of the shitter just a tad, thanks to a president that no one wants to thanks for doing it. But it could also be because there is more MMOs slash subscription services and such. And basically, they, people might not have the money for it. Or it could be reason X. Now, my question to you, Raven, you're going first, is... <laughs> impressive. <laughs> My question to you, oh, just so you guys know, that did not come out of the officer's mouth or my mouth. Gather what you will. Uh, <laughs> why do exactly do you think, or what exactly do you think caused Destiny 2 to sell less than it has in its original version when it first came out? Oh, I, I mean, that's a premature idea that it would be selling less because we're not even taking into account that, and I know a good handful of people that I played Destiny with mm -hmm. on uh, the PlayStation they're all going to, uh, or a very large amount of them, they're going to go to uh, PC. And that hasn't even launched yet. They just got their beta, what, about a week or two before the game for uh, consoles launched? About a week so, ago. So, and they're not even, they're not even taking into account digital sales. Like, well, the game is failing. But is it? Do you really fucking know that? And I doubt it. So when you think about, you know, the people that are going to, they, they've always wanted PC. They've always wanted it on a computer. So when you, when you take that into account, you're looking at like a, at least, you know, a good third of the fan base that wanted it there to begin with. They're finally going to get it, but it hasn't launched yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, short, sweet, and to the point. What about you, officer? What do you think? Well, to be honest, I was never really into Destiny after how much they mucked up the first one with a lot of stuff they just straight up cut out the sale of DLC, but Damn. honestly, that's uh, not a practice I will ever accept. I mean, game was good, and I would imagine, based on what uh, Raven just said, I would imagine that, yeah, probably a lot of them are going to be going to the PC, though a thought occurs to me, if What's Most that? of the people uh, got it on console, played it on console. I would assume most of their friends would be staying on console and not suddenly deciding, oh, well, I want to jump over to the PC. I mean, is there something about the PC version that's innately better? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people that have, uh, they did the beta on PC, they liked it so much more. These are players that, you know, they, you know, they play Heroes of the Storm. They play games like maybe Rocket League once in a while, but more often mm. than not, they're generally PC gamers. Well, so to have a second one released on PC, at least ten people on on my list have 
they're they're stuck on that. They're like, yeah, no, fuck that. We're not going to do PlayStation or Xbox. We'd rather play it on our computers. And from my understanding, it runs better. Well, uh. to partially piggyback on what she's saying, one of the oldest and most tried and true reasons why certain games like that are better on the PC isn't because it's, oh, it's on the PC. It's because mouse clicking is accurate shooting. It's on the same level as Wii Motion Plus shooting. Like, there are people that skilled or so used to playing with that level of accuracy that a console is a downgrade. Not to mention, technically it is a downgrade. Shooting with an analog is, n is not as precise or as uh, sensitive as shooting with a mouse. Not to mention, there's more space in between uh, the clicking versus the trigger pulling. Which is why I've never liked it when a first person shooter, or really any shooter, defaults you into making your shoot button the bottom trigger buttons. Because that automatically gives you a sense of delay. Even if they set it to uh, maximum sensitivity, where you really only got to flick it, doesn't matter. You can always tap a button more than you can pull a trigger. Delay is a very, very, very big reason why my boyfriend of, what, 10 years? And as much as he enjoyed playing Destiny and raiding and everything, if me playing on, you know, the 60-inch TV, the delay was enough that he could not stand it. He's like, why the fuck is it not on PC? And do I really have to hook up my PlayStation to a, to a computer monitor? just to get the feedback that I need without that delay. You're trying to shoot at something, much less trying to do crucible. And you have a second delay between, it doesn't matter what your sensitivity is on your um, on your controller. But if, when you have that feedback delay in the frame rate in general, yeah, you have a lot of people that are used to, you know, instant what I do, it needs to happen right the fuck now, as opposed to being like, well, if I could play it on a better platform, why wouldn't I? Mm, PC settings must be low or PC minimums I should say must be low all right my turn um I think we all kind of have the same agreement however for different reasons for me it's not a superiority thing because there are plenty of games that can perform better than a console version but don't and obviously they're usually Japanese games but I'm not here to stereotype or shoot them in the face matter of fact you know what? Hey, Matt, let's put that on the back burner for topic for next week. Why the hell do mm. Japanese companies seem to, like, synonymously fuck up their PC ports? Anyways, Ooh, I yeah. know, right? <laughs> I know. Oh, there's I, potential on that. Dude, like, 70% of my Steam list is, is Japanese uh, games I got on the console. I just want to see the mods. 65% of them, I'm sorry, let me phrase that. 85% of them have a fuck up that... They just said, eh, fuck it, we're not fixing it. But of course, they won't say those exact words. Anyways, oh. I think, uh, as I stated earlier, one of the biggest things could be people broke. Or rather, there's more things to use money on, on top of the natural pricing of this game has increased. And I'm not good at statistics, so if I fuck this number up, hey, it's not my fault. Almost by a 15% minimum. So first off, let's just do some quick math that I'm going to type in onto Discord, even though there's not a calculator option built in. But yeah, y'all feel free to pull up a calculator. The average price of a PlayStation 4, y'all can hear me, right? Yeah. Let okay. me tilt this mic a little bit because I leaned in. There the average, we go. Yeah, the average price of a PlayStation 4 is about $399. And we're not talking about the Pro. Or two ninety nine. I think uh, two ninety nine right now. Yeah, two ninety nine. Mind you, that's before taxes. X Bone, same shit, because they want to stay competitive like nobody's fucking business. And then there's the copy of the game, fifty nine ninety nine. Everybody just barely beat out. In, a bit, everybody just barely beat out inflation. Video game prices aren't dictated by companies when they're physical. They're dictated by the distributors and the people that manufacture the disc that the data goes on. Fun fact, but we'll get into that another time. Or either we already did, and I'm just saying it because Raven didn't know that. All right. Now, there's also a subscription for both of these bastards because you can't play their games online without one. Now, let's say you already have PlayStation Plus and you got the annual. So you paid 59 
99 to use this shit for 12 months so you don't have to end up paying like 120 or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. what is the price of Xbox Gold? I don't know it. A year? It's like 49 or is it the same? 69, 59? 49.99. Wait, wait, wait. What was the uh, 59.99 for? That's how much uh, PlayStation Gold, is, PlayStation Plus is for 12 months, without the yeah. um, annual uh, re re uh, re reapplication. Normally they charge you 9.99 a month, or you got the option of getting for 60 bucks the uh, 12 month package. I'm assuming. Yeah, smart... I, don't, I don't think I've ever done anything less than that. Yeah, well, smart decision because every other one is gonna hit your wallet or your boyfriend's wallet fucking hard as shit. Hmm. Long story short, uh, getting a 12-month package from Sony saves you almost 40% compared to every other plan they got. So you kind of sort of have to. Now that being said, they're both $59.99. So whatever council you choose, if you're starting from scratch, you're looking at paying two ninety-nine plus fifty-nine. Nah, nah. Plus another 59. Nah, nah. Now, someone with a calculator, do that math with me real quick. Now, I can tell you just based on where I am in my taxes, I'm almost out an extra $45. And that's if everything is brand new. Even if you get a used system, the tax is basically going to cancel it out. So all bullshit aside, you compare this to Destiny 1 that had the option of PS3, X360, uh, PS4, and Xbone, and PC. You've eliminated two options. Now let's do a little bit of common sense real here, right quick. You and I, everyone knows that if you can get something cheap to do something you already wanted to do, you're going to go for the cheap option, especially if it's going to do the same thing. Am I wrong? So, with the exception of PC gamers, on average, when someone wants to play a game on a console, they go for a console they already own, and they want to try to get it used. Or even if they do get it new, they still got to pay that monthly fee on top of monthly fee bullshit. So, Hmm. I think the reason that it sold less, even though it's more critically acclaimed and shit like that, isn't because of anything too dramatic or because of, you know, Master Race bullshit. By the way, I'd love to meet the motherfucker that came up with that shit make his ass look even more racist than his shit sound but, but I digress um I mean, you there cut are off reasons. you cut off literally uh, the possibility of over 10 million people playing this game because no matter how fun Destiny is everyone and their mama is not gonna instantly drop their old system and get that shit just for that one game there are games like that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's impossible for someone to like Destiny 2 that much, even though they haven't played it. But that money isn't just going to pop out of thin air. So I think the reason is because there's less ways to... Sh- they have less means of dividing up their product. Remember, PS3, PS3, Xbox, 360, PS4, PC. That's six. And they got rid of two. So that leaves four. So, unless, you know, there's a Switch version somewhere we don't know about, but anything's possible these days. Well, the PlayStation 3 came out in 2006. So, I mean, the fact that they even had Destiny available for the PlayStation 3, yeah, I understand that people want to stick to their old uh, consoles and everything. But even with any game, even when we had to make the Switch from, you know, PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3 for a lot of big-name games, I mean... It's up to the user. I mean, and it's not going to be... I mean, think about it. I mean, we're, what, more than 10 years later? Yep. With the PlayStation 4? If you have not upgraded, Three. like, that's on you. You cannot expect every game to be compatible with your old-ass systems. Not to mention... Definitely not with that gap. Not to mention, a lot of people don't know it or keep forgetting that the PlayStation 3, for all their technical aspects that they bragged about, that little piece of shit... RAM is so garbage that the size that they use and capacity was obsolete when they made the damn thing. Yeah, the PS3 doesn't even have a gig of RAM. It has megabytes of RAM. Megabytes of RAM. Megabytes of RAM 
stopped being produced. Well, rather, let me phrase that. Commercially available megabytes of RAM for a standard machines stopped being produced back in like 99 or about 2001. So basically, they were using obsolete shit on top of their high tech shit simultaneously. And let's be realistic. Yeah. Ain't no way in fuck you was gonna even, I wouldn't even have expected Destiny 2 to pop out on the 360 or the PS3 at all. No, it's unrealistic. Not yeah. with how big games are to begin with. Yeah, yep. and the fact that all these companies are too lazy to learn how to compress shit unless your name is Nintendo or you're a first party Sony company. It's crazy. So, but that's I mean, how... it's not, it's not just, you know, it's not even just the difference of, you know, consoles. It's the fact that they changed a lot of features and they made Destiny too. They even said, they're like, look, it's not going to be the same game. They used to have where you could do a fire team of up to six people. Therefore, you'd be 12 people in a Crucible PvP match. Whereas now, you know, the max is eight. You can only do teams of four. And a lot of people didn't like that. And the beta for the consoles, they came out way earlier. And they, they've since, you know, fixed a lot of things and, you know, gone over a lot of the aspects. But that didn't change. Not to my knowledge. Not from what I played the other night. <laughs> well, that being said, um, well, obviously we're not going to disagree with you or anything. But I feel like that that's why. And uh, I guess with that being said, unless anyone has a rebuttal, uh, we can move on to that other little Destiny thing. Is it too early or is it just right to start calling OP shit that need to be patched? In your opinion, Raven, are there any classes or any class abilities that... Titan. <laughs> okay, well, you go ahead and explain my whole question because you already knew what I was going to say anyway whilst I go throw away these pistachio shells. All right, I'm assuming you're talking about classes that need to either be... Uh buffed or to be um what's the word i'm looking for nerfed the nerf thank you uh okay so one of the huge issues i even had with destiny one and I, i'd get mad you had a striker titan and their special the fist of havoc everyone knows we call it the fist of panic there's some big fucking asshole running at you either one one like one shot hit with a shoulder charge and you're fucking dead by magic okay fine if that's not enough, if he doesn't have that shoulder charge available, what he can do is we call the fist of panic, he slams down, you feel fucking die. Once having one of that, that like that was enough. I did not need that shit to become three or four, which is what they've done in Destiny 2. And I, I had the absolute misfortune of trying to run the fuck away. It's almost like a, it reminds me of when they had uh, the hammers when they came out with the third subclass in Destiny 1. And there, there was no beating it. You just have a fucking hammer bro running around. I hear ping and I'm like, bail, bail, get the fuck out. Go, go, give, give them B. We don't need it. <laughs> so to hmm. have the Striker Titan be, you know, all powerful yet the fuck again, only with, dear God, what, 300, 400% more capability? Fuck no, get me out of there. Fucking can't with that shit. Oh my so God, I didn't I enjoy that. Not the fuck at all. Oh no. That and the uh, the um, da, 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 solar subclass for the um, warlock. You get a giant sword. You cannot aim. You cannot aim those throws. You, you can't fucking do it. I mean, more power to you if you figured it out. But apparently, I'm the dum dum that can't figure it out. So I mean, if I need anything that will track, I need a nova bomb. You know, and they fixed how they do subclasses in general. What did they change? Sure, fine. They uh, they they have it where you can pick like a different skill route. How they had it prior in Destiny One is that you get your subclass and you can pick your features. Whereas with Destiny Two, you can pick your features, but it can only be either like one track or another. So you have four capabilities that center around your subclass. And you can either get, okay, well, when you, when you hit your uh, special and you hit um, circle, whatever, you can slam down with your sort of fucking fiery doom and hit shit around you. Okay, cool. If you pick the selection of four perks available in the, uh, the upper corner, uh -huh. it does other shit. That other one's not available. And I'm not articulate enough to describe it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to read it on Google, that's fine. But I was curious because... 
I never actually stood how the fuck classes could even work in an, uh, a first person shooter. Normally what I see motherfuckers do is they, they get lazy as hell. They lock a weapon type behind a character class, which is, I'm sorry, but I know that's what normal people, what normally happens in a fantasy MMO, but it just seems so odd in a modern MMO. Oh, you can't use this machine gun even though you have five digits, a functioning brain, two eyes, and you know what? You even got a bonus set of five digits on the opposite arm attached to your functioning body. But for some reason, your brain can't comprehend having a sniper rifle, shooting a sniper rifle, but also having a machine gun and shooting a machine gun, and then there's the explosives. But uh, to its credit, Destiny is one of the only fucking games where I've seen them pull off shit like that. And it actually seems like cohesive with the canon. Well, I mean, I've never had it where it's like, oh, you can't use this particular weapon. All the weapons are free game and interchangeable even between all your classes. One of the things they did change is that you cannot stack up and hoard armor from one class and use it to upgrade another. I can't keep my shit for my warlock, make a hunter, and then put all of my uh, higher class stuff into hunter armor. Can't do that anymore. However, all the Ooh. weapons, I can, I can switch those between any character I want. The only thing they changed were where um, what is classified as your primary, your secondary, and your, uh, your heavy or your special. Or power weapon, whatever fucking new way that they have worded it. And they, t they changed like, like shotguns and sniper rifles. Those are no longer secondary weapons because what they saw in Destiny 2... Everyone and their goddamn mother, that is where hits were coming from. If you were doing any kind of a match, you were either sniping or you were shotgunning. So they made it that that would be the heavy weapon. And they also kept, you know, uh, like rocket launchers, grenade launchers, those are new, as heavy weapons. So to control, kind of like the kill economy, that you have to actually use a pulse rifle, a, um, an auto rifle, a scout rifle, a hand cannon, or a sidearm. And they've kind of made, um, they've even made scout rifles. They're not just primary, they can be secondary. Same thing with auto rifles and all that. But they made weapons that you, you really do have to fucking be on, you gotta be on your guard. You have to know where you're aiming. You can't just one shot shit. There's no one shot uh, primary or secondary. Okay. So who exactly, or what exactly do you main and why in Destiny? I'm kind of curious. Say it again? I said, who or what exactly do you main in Destiny 2? I'm kind of curious, class-wise and weapon-wise. Um, I have always preferred the world class. Because you get the magic talk to the hand power. You, you fucking you slap the shit out of people. You're trying to say the force? They fall down. You get the force? You do. You do. You get like the, you got the tickle finger Palpatine, which is your your arc subclass. You just shoot lightning and fucking electrocute everybody. Uh, you have your Void Walker, where you throw a giant fucking space bomb of void power for your special. And you can uh, when you melee people, you can uh, steal their life and heal yourself. They do like energy drain, that kind of thing. Um, and then you have the solar class, which in Destiny 1 was my absolute favorite because you had the option to, uh, you, you could just be like, I'm Jesus and resurrect. People fucking hated that. I thought it was hilarious. I'm like, well, fuck you, you're a titan, eat a dick with your fucking fist of panic. So, yeah. Oh and um, they nerfed the shit out of grenades, but I still prefer the warlock. And depending on what I'm doing... I, I will always lo love the uh, the solar class, but I'm coming to um, appreciate the uh, the arc. I mean, Definitely ain't no wrong with having your hand that. in more than one pot. Hmm? I said, ain't nothing wrong with having your hand in more than one pot. But they did make, um, the way that they did it with Destiny 2, they made all of the classes, or at least, you know, with the Warlock, all the subclasses, they made each of them likable not necessarily like oh i prefer one over the other mm -hmm. they made all of them enjoyable to play which i can't appreciate and they did balance it out the and again the only issue i don't have a titan even on destiny one i still have to like rank up my fat fucking shit of a titan but <laughs> wow your <laughs> I, words I, I your only, words 
I only made one to get the trophy, and I haven't even done that yet. So, maybe. But from what I've seen of the Titan, yeah, I mean, they're fucking, they're huge, clunky tanks, man. It beat the shit out of anything in their, in their area. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I haven't really tried out, you know, the, um, the Hunter or the Titan. But it's looking like the Titan right now is, like, pretty damn great for dealing damage in overall probably needs to be nerfed a little bit <laughs> just a smidge oh yeah i mean I'm, and i'm biased I'll, I'll admit that i'm definitely biased towards the warlock okay well um if we didn't have our preferences we wouldn't be different if we weren't different we wouldn't be human ah <laughs> for that okay well Slightly moving on, uh, gonna deviate from the whole Destiny 2 spiel. Okay. On to topic two, which, hmm. Okay. Topic number two Can streaming services usher the possibility of good video? What? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong place. Sorry, hold on. The second coming of cloud gaming servers. Due to the modern technological improvements, subscription-based gaming of non-MMO titles is more than just a fantasy. Fantasy Star Online 2, yes, yes, I went there. I put a pun in the topic, fuck you, I regret nothing. Is now getting a Switch version, which is completely streamed, meaning that there is absolutely pretty much nothing to download, and then it's called Fantasy Star Online 2, Coraldo. Or, if you actually know how to speak English, Cloud. <laughs> this version is completely streamed now, making it on top of being the sequel to the first ever council MMO for a video game. Oh, sorry. Uh, wordsmith right there. The first ever council MMO, but now the first ever online council streamed Cloud MMO. What are the odds that all companies in the future try to make you pay annual fees for their titles instead of, you know, actually buying them and owning them? Would it destroy council gaming? Would it, you know, coexist peacefully? Why or why not? Mr. Cops, because you've never gotten to go first. Hmm. Be honest. Uh, the potential of a cloud-based game... It could work. It could work, definitely. But they, uh... I'm just gonna have to uh, make sure that... What's the word? I'm, what's what I'm looking for here? Uh, that... Uh, there aren't uh, problems with people's ability to access the cloud. And that, on launch, they have enough, you know, processing power for the cloud to cover all of the people that are going to want to play it. But yeah, I think this is a honestly actually a pretty interesting idea. Though admittedly I might be biased in my uh, being a fan of the Fantasy Star series, but yeah, I kind of like this idea. Wow, I am completely blindsided and did not think you would say that. All right, Raven, what's your feelings? <laughs> well, I think I've already seen an example of it when it comes to PlayStation, which, like you said, I, I'm already on the console and everything. I already pay for the uh, subscription every year. They have an option where you can play all the PlayStation 2 and, you know, no, PlayStation no, 3 no. games. No, 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 it's just 3. Or whatever the fuck it is. I don't... Whatever. I didn't buy it because they want to charge you, you know, an additional fee every month to have access to their library, but I can't actually own the games. And every time I look at it, I'm like, that's not fucking worth it. I personally don't like it. However, I can see that there would be a lot of people who would find it preferable. I don't want a glorified renting system. I really don't. I want to play something whenever the fuck I want without having to pay a damn fee every month. I already get fucked on Netflix and Hulu and all that other shit. I really don't need to be like, oh, maybe I want to rent a game like once every five days and I'm going to pay for this subscription. No, fuck you. Not doing it. 
Oh my god. See? That 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 answer. That answer was so beautiful that I think I might cry. Oh that, <laughs> that answer felt so good. See that that answer, you heard that, Matt? That that answer right there should make your nipples hard. Mm, that was beautiful. Well, I will say one thing though, adding to what I said, I personally wouldn't go for it. But I can see people going for it, and if they do, it'd be cool. Maybe, uh, maybe it'll turn out well. But I personally wouldn't go for it. No, me neither. However, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, a bunch of 15-year-olds like, Mom, I need this, and that way you don't actually have to buy the games. So Mom's looking on her credit card later like, what the fuck am I paying for every damn month? Are you shitting me? You know that's exactly what's going to happen, too. You know that's what's going to happen. So, has anyone here heard about what happened to Jack Black's kid? Happened to what? Jack Black's kid. No. Okay, before I proceed, I just want to point out, I am not going off topic. But uh, give me a second. I want to make sure I get my shit straight. Okay. I might be smoking and cutting out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna leave that one in there so you can figure out what you said. All right. So basically, do you remember Matt when I explained to you the term whale for uh, video games and just you know products in general? Which was that? Whale. I don't remember that one, unfortunately. Okay. Long story short, a whale is somebody who is an easy person to upsell and will spend an inordinate amount of money no matter what you fucking trying to sell them because, well, they have no fucking impulse control, really. Okay? Hmm. Yeah, I know, people right? that are, they're Stupid. like, oh, that logo for Shock Top looks really cool. I'm going to try that beer. It's a shitty beer. What are you doing? Go buy it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you hit that nail on the dick. Yeah. So, these people, if you can truly even call them that, these people, uh, they code damn near into their own fucking system of how they do things when it comes to refunds. In fact, that's one of the reasons why Steam basically only gives refunds as long as a country lets them get away with that shit. See... Uh, you don't I've necessarily, oh, you're, you're, we're different. You don't necessarily have to give these motherfuckers. Who's shit is this? Okay. okay. No, sorry. Uh, I, I, I have a home server, which I don't know where it got there, but it has music in it. That's not mine. Um, all right. Wow. So yeah, I know. Right. So basically fucking, I shit you not. There are people who can play uh, a cell phone game where you can actually play the game, get everything in game without actually paying for anything, and they'll still go drop $400 the same day they got the game because they have no yep. addiction control. They're basically gamblers who don't know that they're addicts, right? Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah, so Jack Black's kid, or really children in general, are very easily converted into whales because they're still working on a lot of impulses. Or lack of responsibility. It's not my money. Why worry? Or I didn't even know it was costing money because everything's set up to automatically pay for itself. Mm -hmm. Jack Black's kid ran up a thousand dollar bill in a cell phone game, or that was on a tablet, in one day. Ah. Now uh, let me just say, uh, all bullshit aside, uh, his last name may be a certain reference to a skin tone, but if his parents was black, and he had tried that. Uh, Jack Black wouldn't be a father because he would have killed his ass. I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry, but uh, parents would have done. No, no. Are you kidding me? My, if I ever did anything like that, all my shit would have been taken away, sold off to pay that bill. Like that. That's not even. Wow, you do no, get off lucky. You lucky bastard. No, I would have gotten my fucking ass whooped for that. Like, okay, what that's what I was looking for. <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, you know, I'm, you're going to learn. You're going to learn really fucking quick. You're going to learn today. <laughs> I fucking used to hear that. Even when I didn't get in trouble, I just hated hearing, you're going to learn today. And then the motherfucker yep. started saying that shit in the military, and it was 10 times worse. Because that means they were going to sit down and think about what they were going to do to you. Then they're going to come back later when you are in an <laughs> inopportune moment or you're fucking tired, and they going to fucking put your ass through the ringer. And the worst one is when you didn't do shit, somebody else got fucked over. When you were gone, so everybody get fucked over, but you didn't know anything about it, so now you basically are somehow enemy number one because you made it worse, but no one told you, oh no, you about to, you had to get oh, fucked over. Oh, collective today. punishment, of course. Yeah, no, but it's <laughs> it's collecting punishment when you're not there. So, like, you're supposed to just uh. know. What? Ass whooping since it's tingling. Hmm, I should probably have my pants down right now and assume the position. I don't know why, though. Anyways, so, yeah, that, that uh... Let's just say that that got to me and a lot of fucking people back in my uh, old choice of work, which unfortunately I'm going back into. I kind of wanted to time it before W3 started, but eh, well, we can't control stupid people. So, hmm. Any, anyways, uh, all right. So, yeah. Now here's the thing about these uh, well type people: you can't predict them. They come in all shapes and sizes. However, statistical data has shown that companies do and will tell their employees to go out of their way to target them. You know how fucked up that is? Well, actually, yeah, y'all know exactly how fucked up that is. I mean, I come to expect it at this point. I don't, but at the same time, well, I have no faith in humanity, but sometimes there's shit I just don't see coming. The entertainment industry, when it's run by people who want to entertain, they can do a lot of good, or they can do just a lot of shit that isn't bad. The problem is, like with any in form of entertainment, when we get corporation, I truly, sincerely believe the only thing that big corporations didn't fuck up when they got a hold of it was radios. They didn't fuck up radio. Everything else they got a hold of. Music that goes on radio, yes. TV. Fucking concerts. Video games. So literally anytime big corporations get involved, some of them fuck it up or they fuck it up so bad that everyone else has to pay for it. And then they wonder why indies don't want to go for a big corporation anymore. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you kind of didn't give them incentive, motherfucker. You know? I so, mean, not only that, though, I mean, it's, it's less money for them to make, you know, a stupid game on mobile. And then have, you know, like, oh, but you can do more of this for the next hour if you pay that price. And before you know it, they're like, well, I want to keep playing. I'm yeah, bored. the first blow job's free, but everyone after that. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wanted to say it before she did. I actually got it from her three years ago. Um, But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, well, let's, let me get back on my opinion, because I just want to tell probably about that Jack Black story. Uh, For me, I say it's a resounding... A, I ain't got time for that, and B, oh, hell nah. But my reasoning is very simple. Even if we were ever in a point in time where, let's say, money wasn't an option, and our economy is doing so perfect that uh, raising the, uh, making an income standard is basically a waste of senators' time because everything's perfect. I'm going to tell you why it's still a shit idea. One, like both of you stated, or like Stan Lee partially stated, which would you rather have? A picture of a tit or a tit in your hand? <laughs> exactly. When I want to play a game, I want to play a game. Not to mention, shit can and does happen. What if there's an earthquake or some unforeseen natural weather event that's going to happen and does happen because we still have climate deniers here in fucking America and China and Russia? <sighs> And, oh, even if you were doing good and they backed up all your shit, guess what? Oh, there goes your save file, buddy. We already don't even have to have our save files saved on the fucking system. So who's to say, and we all know that in order for them to even keep this shit backed up, they make copies of this that function offline. Who's to say that something won't happen down the line? So one, fact number one, the risk versus reward. That risk is too high for me for that type of reward of going anywhere or playing anywhere. Second thing for me, um, did you motherfuckers forget that 
your games aren't fun and interesting enough for people to sit legitimately forsake everything else <laughs> if you lined up every game that electronic arts has ever been responsible for making in the past since however they've been around and i and you told me these are the only games that i can choose from in the entire world and i have to pay 10 bucks a month my subscription is going to end in two because in their entire library and i've googled and wikied it there are only five games I want to play, and guess what? I already beat three of them. Yeah, it's not even worth it. Yeah. Now, and also, not to mention, and of course he's a dumbass, but let's be honest, we all know how EA and Activision did at this time. I think yeah. was the CEO of EA. CEO of EA. I, I hate trying to say those together. I always fuck it up. Who stated that he feels like, quote unquote, in the future, everything is going to go to a subscription service. It'll be more renting than owning. It's like, no, bitch. What happened is... Your company is trying to do that, but you forget that problem solving and data coding checking and all of that shit costs a fuck ton of money. So nobody trusts your goddamn system and they say, fuck it a lot. Nobody likes Origin. I've never woken up in the morning and heard somebody say they love the Origin system. <laughs> origin, you play, both are pretty bad. Yeah, they, they just said, oh, well, we want Steam money. Like, well, bitch, your catalog ain't big enough. That's what you don't seem to get. Re realize, Steam is the way it is because it's not their catalog. It's other people going into their website. And people can play Steam games offline. Hashtag, uh, disclaimer, games, some, not all. Yeah. DRM yeah. bullshit. Some, you can't, but, eh. Yeah, yeah, but, but I digress. So basically, that's strike number two. Now, the final uh, nail on the penis is a very simple one. When you don't have the internet, what option do you have? If this, that's right, a big old fat helping of goose egg with a side of pig wings. So, Yo. well, my life... Is going in four or five billion different directions. Most of them supposedly positive, but it still keeps me up at night. But that aside, let's just say my money game is going to go up. Not to what it used to be, but it's going to go up dramatically to the point where, uh, I don't know, I may move my ass down near Wheaton and shit and some other crap. But. <laughs> Run away. Fucking old white Republicans over here, man. Terrifying. <laughs> we live in Illinois. They are a dime a dozen downtown. Also, I'm their boogeyman. They run from me. Anyways. Yeah, so, they kind of do. That aside. They do. They're afraid. They're like people in like Naperville. They're like, they got like carjacked in their own driveway. Oh, no. And I mean, like if you if you try to carjack me in a driveway, I'm going to fucking stab you. Uh, like, yeah, cost. don't remind here, me of Naperville. People are like, oh my god, like, take the car, please leave me alone, it's gonna be fine. She is really good at that dumb blonde voice. But no, I was just referring to, uh, one, I have an education, two, I'm damn near six foot, three, uh, I know about five, six different ways to properly fuck somebody's ass up with or without a weapon, uh, f uh, fucking, um, four, vet, and, uh, five, natural angry face when I'm surrounded by old racist people, and also six, doesn't matter of anything once I said it the two facts of being a darkie and being almost six foot pretty much guaranteed I'm not gonna get fucked with unless they call the cops that being said that's 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 a whole thing for later but the whole point is basically I'm not necessarily gonna have money for this shit or what if literally to save money I have to cut the internet you think somebody's gonna cho choose a subscription service for a game over food? <laughs> no. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of incidents in fucking South Korea, China, and sometimes Japan. Not too many over here. But the whole point is that those are rare cases. It's depressing. It happens. But those are rare cases. Most common sense people, even the stupid ones, hmm, how are you going to play a game if you're dead? That pops off in people's head. Yeah. So you're not going to see it. So those are my biggest problems in summary. What if I ain't got the fucking internet? What if their data and all their shit gets fucked up? And uh, 
What if I got too many other subscriptions on my plate? And I don't even forget what the fourth one is, but basically, fuck you, EA, because I know you're thinking about doing this shit. And I haven't said fuck you, EA, this week, so, yeah. I mean, I always laugh and people are like, yeah, I bought the new Sims. I'm like, mm, no, I torrented that. Yes. <laughs> one must say their weekly fuck EA, fuck Ubisoft, and last but not least, Konami. fuck Konami. Fuck Konami. <laughs> Thank God for me. I'm sorry, I They're just love Jim Sterling. <laughs> I love Jim Sterling. Uh, that aside, oh, oh, hey kids, guess what? I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there's a website you can Google called thepiratebay.org. Guess what you can do on this website to EA, Konami, and Ubisoft. You can get all up in there like some fucking Nazis and then secretly take over and get all of the games. And when you get all of the games, they're going to work offline. Even the ones that they didn't want to work offline, like The nah. Sims. They tried to it's put The good. Sims behind the play wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sims. The game that has over 100 million fucking purchases and it's only on number title number four. You sincerely thought that would happen. My favorite part is the day later. Oh, we, we, we made a mistake. We are sorry how you say. See, we meant to make sure it could work off, off the line, but we weren't sure how to get it to work properly yet. Bitch, are you serious? That's not even, that's not even fucking technically possible with modern technology. There is no way in fuck you can make a game function online only before it can function offline at all. It's literally not humanly possible. But of course, this is yeah we're talking about, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right. We all pretty much agreed. It sounds fun on paper, but it probably won't do much or go anywhere anytime soon. It sounds like free money for companies because, I mean, if you look at everyone's like, all right, you know, I'll buy Netflix. Okay, I'll do Hulu. And then maybe you get like a third. And then all of a sudden there's a fourth. So, I mean, say you have like Amazon Prime and then Hulu and then Netflix, and then maybe Crunchyroll. Now, to contemplate paying a monthly fee for more streaming, whether it's, you know, games or another uh, streaming app for either TV shows or movies, that's a, and you're already paying for internet and cable and all this other shit. Everyone is like, well, look at all the money that Netflix is making. That yeah, don't mean you can get it. Can, yeah, but I guess, uh, and I heard that, heard that Disney, now they are. They, want to they do, fucking yeah, are. But they're here's gonna some, do their own fucking streaming app, and it's like, how many fucking more until I'm just done with it, and I cancel everything, and then go back to torrenting, because that's where I'm getting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, oh, here's a spot of good news. At least, uh, not Nintendo. Sorry. Um, they're being smart about it. They said that if the server fails, they're not getting rid of the shows. They're just gonna throw them on Netflix. Netflix. So Young Justice Three will be on this DC premium service horseshit. But if the network fails, they're going to throw it on Netflix. So I'm torn. Do I watch it and it succeed and I have to fuck with this? Or do I not it. watch it, wait for them to fuck it up, keep torrenting, and then wait for it to get on Netflix? Or Hulu? It's just torrented. It, it'll be up like within a week. You can get a torrent version like within a week. Or I guarantee you there are going to be people streaming it anyway. They're like, well, I, I paid for this fucking bullshit. I'm going to stream it for everybody. And a lot of people do that. I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't bother me. And the, No, it helps me. But I mean, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, this one show I really want to watch. Mm, it's not worth an entire new fucking subscription. It's just not. Not yeah. when I mean the average person is already burning 20 to 30 a month on subscriptions actually it's going up to about a uh, 68 50, to 75 50, yeah yeah and exactly. that here's the thing that's they didn't include cell phones in that thank god but and that's without cell phones without cell phones the average monthly subscription price for anything for the average household is almost at a hundred dollars flat it's not surprising i wish it was but you know and and that's a month and most people you know they either have uh Direct TV, U versus Comcast. I mean, I have Comcast, but you know, and that's enough money as it is. That's without, you know, uh, T Mobile, you know, that, that's without the majority of the shit you pay for every month on media alone is it's way the fuck up there. That's definitely in the 
hundred, three hundred range. When you think of media as a whole and what that monthly cost is. Yeah. And well, I'm sure you both remember or know about it, but I'm in a, I exist in a technical gray area. I have access mm -hmm. and get access to a lot of things for free just through the company. However, we also come across things or get, see a list of things we're not supposed to or told not to fuck with because it'll make other people not want to trust us or do business with us like Amazon and whatnot. Basically, you know, mm -hmm. bootleggers and shit like that. But now, yeah. the bootleggers don't even get physical shit or are making physical. The bootleggers are making or utilizing digital shit. They're backing up and putting massive amounts of media on their server and then making apps or special sites that help you access them. But since they attack sites, now they're making apps for it. And then you just project the app on your TV. So you might as well not even go to the website. And <laughs> even if it doesn't have anything legal in it, or you can't, they can't even get it on the unregistered app store. You know, the actual app store that everyone likes when you turn off the little, oh no, we can't do this because, you know, we have it set to only authorized apps. Yeah, that's how insane they're being with some of these apps. I have three of them, by the way. And I can understand because the best one slash biggest one, which I won't say the name of here, actually archives both Hulu and Netflix. Do you know how crazy that is? Mm. Let me say that again. It archives Hulu and Netflix. That means if it's ever been on Netflix, not the DVDs, but the actual digital, if it's ever been on that, if it, and also if it's ever fucking been on Hulu, it's on here. And they're also getting movies the same day they go to digital, not physical, digital release. Sometimes the same night. To be honest, I, I truly do feel bad for some of these companies because, see, it's not that I don't like how their revenue is being fucked with. I, I don't. But also, there's a the problem of if there was no, if there were no checks and balances, even though one of the checks and balances is totally illegal, or I guess unlawful technically. If we didn't yeah. have these checks and balances, how much would they be fucking charging us? We already know they don't give a shit about us. They give a shit about what we'll mm -hmm. buy. Now, I'm not saying that that's every company, but here's the thing. Hollywood is extremely corporate, but not corporate in a sense of it's corporate because, quote unquote, this person there or that person there, you know, is a greedy, money grubbing bastard. It's because they have to pay other people so much money that almost everything is a gamble. If I have a movie that I know it's going to cost me hypothetically $10 million to shoot. Do you know how much and how the minimum that has to go into that movie to be able to make it successful? Not how much you get back, but to go into it almost three times that much to four times that much. Here's why. You got to pay at least one or two actors for top billing. And guess what? The top five actors on your film usually get royalties. So you got to pay them every time you sell. Whether it's physical, digital, or a ticket. And you gotta pay the writer's residuals. The director is on a fucking commission. He may or may not be getting residuals, but let's be honest, a lot of them do get royalties. So now, you got a whole nother entity who's getting two checks off your ass. And then you guess what? You also have to pay for distribution. Because that's the only way you're gonna get it cheap. Because if you go through anybody else, they're gonna butt fuck you. Unless, of course, you're doing inhumane based quote-unquote labor from china which obviously that's gonna happen but even if you cut yeah. that corner and you do as much tax evasion as possible you can't guarantee a profit and then what if you got a movie that's critically acclaimed but it flops do you make a sequel or do you not make a sequel what do you do you really gotta weigh what's gonna happen i'll give you a prime example valerian one of the most legendary and iconic fucking graphic novels to not be made in America. One of the basis is for Star Wars. $110 million. And the only name that people recognized was Rihanna, who's only in the movie for like maybe 15 to 20 minutes, but they gave her, they made it look like she had top fucking billing. And also, <laughs> for two, the female lead looked like Emma Watson so much that people thought Emma Watson was in the fucking movie. And I'm not even joking. So really, what? yeah, go look up Valerian. The league looks so much like 
Emma Watson, people were thinking Emma Watson was in the movie. And then people found out she wasn't. But here's the thing. Outside of those two, but really outside of Rihanna, who's only in the movie for 15, 20 minutes and isn't actually an important character, nobody in that movie was a big name. And it flopped. Even though everyone said this is one of the most beautiful and actually a pretty interesting take on the traditional relationship cliches that you see. And also, you know, it doesn't overburden you with the sci-fi. She does look like Emma Watson. Oh, you Wait, looked her, Hey, drop her drop her in the Discord so uh, uh, Raven can yeah, see. Yeah, what's her fucking name? I don't know. I'll call uh, her Emma Watson Jr. I'm not sure either. Oh, uh, wait. I found her. Uh, find the biggest resolution image you can. Drop it in. So, okay. So, uh, here we got MTV Link, the movie. Because I assume that's the one you're talking about. There's only one Valerian movie. Hopefully, okay. there'll be more. But, yeah, find an image of her. Uh, what's her name? Let's see. With Donna. I think it's Donna Dehane or Cara Delvinge. Oh, Clive Owens in this movie, but Clive Owens didn't even get mentioned in the commercials and shit. No, Dane Dehane or Dehan or whatever. That, that's a dude. Wow. Okay, well, Cla oh, well, Cara Delvinge, she looks incredibly a lot like Emma Watson. And also, in when that she, movie, at least. Yeah, and when she yeah. cut her hair short for the movie, which she did, it looked, she looked even more like fucking Emma Watson. But. It was a good movie. Okay, this is a good image. Let me open this. Like an angry Emma Watson. And I don't mean that in a uh, mean way. Take a look at that. What else has she been in? Not a lot, but you see the whole point is basically that they made a movie from a critically acclaimed series. Obviously, they wanted to get some of that comic book money. They're not superheroes, though. They're soldiers, for lack of a better term. And look what fucking happened. That movie fucking bombed. They didn't even start Valerian from its origin. Maybe that might have been why, possibly, because the story starts in the middle of itself. Or put it this way. The movie is based off of volume six of the Valerian series. So a lot of shit was established that we aren't even going to see. But I'll tell you this right now. I will be one of the first people to get this game in 4K when it comes out or Blu-ray. I don't care. It's a good movie. And like a lot of good movies, or people who are in somewhat of the artistic realm, but I'm not a snoot like them hoes, I don't think that just because a movie is foreign or independent, it's automatically better than a Hollywood movie. I think every movie should be judged by if it's good or bad, period. Oh god, yeah. I hate when people have that opinion. Well, it wasn't made in America. So much better. I'm like, what are you fucking piece of shit? Fuck you. Yeah, and I'm just like, motherfucker, you fucking speak vegans. English, and you've been speaking English your whole life, and these countries, these other movies that are better are made, and you're probably never going to go to, and you're going to sit up here and say every single thing? No, the only, the only notable movie that is absolute garbage that America can't get rid of is Birth of a Nation. And I'm going to tell you why. Because every time Birth of a Nation shows up on any type of site that has a critical review site, fucking fuckboy neo-Nazi KKK cousin fuckers give it a hundred, try to make sure it gets a hundred percent rating. Uh, they yeah. even did it on Rotten Tomato. Before, before they got involved, that movie had like a two or something. But when Nazi fuck cousin fuckers found out, it shot up to 100%. No. We all know that that movie is garbage. If you've actually even seen it, it's garbage. Some people can't stomach it. I don't understand why. I mean, there's not a lot like there was a lot of death and shit. This movie came out in like the 30s or the 40s, like right when movies were a, even a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe just sometimes vegan hipsters are too cool for American movies. But uh. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. But that aside, yeah. You know, th this is the face of fucking of here this is the guy whatever this kind of dude oh my god he's the kind wow. of guy that is he like, literally yeah, looks like what i envision a hipster movie. looking like fucking right dude he uh this is the kind of guy who's like yeah vanilla sky was a great movie but i don't really like other american movies I'm, 
Oh, okay. I can't want a gun enough. Can't. Ugh. Just get off your goddamn high horse and yes. take the stick out of your ass. And it's like and it's like it's, it's like it's self it's like it's self inflicted too. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't hate hipsters. I look at hipsters like parents look at that new cool fad that they don't understand that all the kids are into. I accept that it exists, but I'm never gonna give that much of a shit about it. I just accept that there's a lot of kids that like it. That's not how. That, but, and that's a well-dressed one. This guy doesn't look like majority, and they're all they're all going for the homeless. Yeah, one. he's missing. He's missing like, his fedora. They all look like fucking Lapo kids. Oh, do you know what Lapo is? No, but yeah, they're miss. He's missing his fedora. But I don't want to yeah, beat up this complete and total stranger that we can't see. But uh, I do find it ironic that the image name is even the bearded hipster. Like he's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all should have seen what I did today. Did y'all see what I did to the last episode of Game of Thrones of the last season? Nope. Okay, well, first off, who here after. has seen... I don't want to spoil anything. Who here has seen the last episode of the last season? Of Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. You seen it? Uh, you seen it, Officer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I predicted this shit happening while it was happening. Right when that fucking dragon hit the water, I was like, "That motherfucker is gonna find a way to turn that dragon into an ice dragon or an undead yeah. zombie. He's gonna do some shit like that. I just fucking know it." So, I mean, well, you got to keep in mind, though, that they're basically writing fan fiction at this point. Because first of all, they, they were always writing fan content. fiction. They were always I know, but writing the writer, fan fiction. The writers have taken off and they're like, fuck it. We, we have permission from, you know, the creator to, eh, we can just do whatever the fuck we want. Because uh, George R. R. Martin has S yet to actually dictate that content. And don't where bullshit. It's because he's slow as fuck content. writing. Don't bullshit it. Oh, yeah. He's no, a, I'm not. no, he's trolling us. He's probably no, already no. had He stuff. is the Kojima of bucks. bookmaking. Let's not lie. He's the Kojima of bookmaking. They need to change his name to George R. R. Jima, okay? That <laughs> we, are into, we are into Game of Thrones filler season. <laughs> First off, the, 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 I'm more like there's filler episodes or parts of episodes that didn't even fucking happen. So it's fragmented filler, which that, that's not a bad type of filler, but it can fuck you up in the long run if mm. you don't do it just right. But uh, long story short, um, all right. So I found a a, 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 a Yu-Gi-Oh card meme, but the back, but I put a background behind it of the uh, the one of the uh, Ice Kings or the the Night King, right? And yeah. I put on it. I play. Uh, you've activated my special effect. Uh, I, I summon, I, I sacrifice your dragon to summon blue eyes, white dragon. And oh yeah. I lay yeah. him, I lay him, I lay him face down and in my season. And I did that whole thing. I uh, did a whole uh, bit about it. Come on. You know, it's funny. Don't bullshit. You groaning or laughing. <laughs> it's mad. It's, no one can tell. He makes sounds and then thinks people, people thinks that those are going to suppose that we're supposed to know that they're words. Like his personal old favorite was eh. Like, motherfucker, that is not a word. Just say what the fuck you trying to say. I know I've said that it's on your Facebook. It's a word I say when I don't care. Well, see, here's the first thing you have to understand. It's not actually a word. So, you're better it off. It is now. No, no, it's not. It is not. you. Yep, sure is. It, that, only works, that only works when trolls are present. But you're better off just typing IDC or IDK. Those aren't words, oh, but they stand for something. IDK. Hit that bitch in the face. I feel like IDK is written on the brain of every stereotypical dumb blonde ever. Like it's tattooed into their Not brain. Not even dumb blonde anymore. Like, like. It's fucking dumber than fucking dumb, everybody. Dear fuck. Well, my I kids mean, don't even know how to make ramen also, noodles by themselves. By the way, don't even know how to make I'll noodles. just leave this here. No. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. He deny. Like, no, I don't recognize it. You damn right. Refuse now delete it. Now, it. anyways, back on what we were doing. You You dick. <laughs> oh, you didn't know you could do that on Discord? No, I know you can. Okay. Well, basically, how it works is um, fucking crap. I almost lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I was making the memes. 
All right, so besides the memes, but no, that's that's just how I fucking look at it. Like, I understand that nothing is stop it. Nothing is a guarantee. I can see you fucking typing. Nothing is a guarantee for success. And for all we know, literally, they could turn Valerian into a Netflix series or a Hulu series. And then it does 10 to 15 times better. But now they're scared to go and make it be a fucking movie for whatever reason. Or they make it a movie and you can only get it off of their Netflix service. And then who's really at fault there? They let the licensing lapse. Who's who's really oh, to blame? God. The mo- Netflix movies. Oh, God. Don't remind me. <laughs> They've got a lot of really interesting things on there. Yeah, they actually have a movie with Adam Sandler that doesn't suck that came out in the past five years. Oh, good. Oh, right. let me rephrase that. Ten years. Click is ten year, over ten years old. Click was good. That, that was like... The only one that yeah. generally people right. agreed on. Click and the one he has with David Spade. But I feel like that one did good because, well, David Spade was probably involved with the fucking writing process. Not David. saying Adam Sandler can't write. He actually doesn't do a lot of writing. He just does a lot of movies. Hmm. All right. What so. was it? They had, a, they had a South Park episode where Cartman becomes Awesome Bot or Awesome Mom. Yeah. <laughs> And, okay, a movie with Adam Sandler, like <laughs> all one hundred something fucking ideas. Ah, <laughs> jeez. Uh, <laughs> I love Park. Okay, well, uh, yeah. All right, let's get back to our final little bit of news or slash topic, because uh, I'm pretty sure everybody spoke on the thing. Uh, paywall era of fighting games. No longer are we in the new age of heroes. We are in the new age of money. And I'm pretty sure you've all seen that uh, paywall uh, stop motion video I gave you, except for Miss Raven, but that's okay. You gonna watch that shit slash learn today because that is hilarious and accurate. Is it too late to get a fighting game in this era that's not going to have characters that are behind a paywall? Or is it over? Are we just that anally wrecked? Why or why not, Mr. Cops? I think that unless it's a new, like an entirely new IP of a fighting game, no, no, it's, we're, we're, we're never, never, never going to happen, man. Sorry. Well, I mean, just, if it's a new IP, half empty, I see. if it's a new IP, then, okay, they might, there's a very good chance it's not going to be something that shows up. Like, it's not going to be a problem for the game. But if it's an already established IP, no, they're they're totally going to do that. They're going to do it every single time. They've been doing it for a while. I mean, to be fair, my concept of time is really bad, but um, if you... one of the few fighting games I'll still play will be uh, Guilty Gear and occasionally Tekken. And, you know, ever since, you know, they had like, oh, well, everyone else is doing DLC. And, well, now you have to buy characters. I'm like, fuck I you. Really... Why can't I earn them through gameplay? I no, really, you have to buy really, them. I really, really wanted to like Guilty Gear on the PS4. I really did. I enjoyed playing it, but... How the fuck are you making me pay for the characters that have been in the series since the fucking beginning? Jam is DLC. Biken was almost DLC and technically she kind of is. Because you have to upgrade to an expansion pack. Hey, well, it's only 19. You ain't got to pay the full 40. It doesn't matter. She was the original secret character. Now she's a paywall character? Yep. One thing I got to ask though what type of DLC, downloadable content or disc locked content. Don't even go there. <laughs> Don't even go there. Cause you gonna, make me, go on a, uh, you gonna yeah. make me go on a Capcom rant again and I'm gonna start sounding like Angry Joe and motherfuckers gonna get pissed at me. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I can have, I, I can't have any faith in that because of the, pre- the, the mere existence of disc locked content. It has destroyed any faith I have for, you know, there being any fighting games out there that won't have the, 
oh hey, DLC locked character. Because <laughs> no, they're they're going to. I have no faith. Sorry, man. Okay, well, um, before I go Super Saiyan to Gohan uh, on <laughs> the state of affairs that we're in, Raven, please tell me you have something nicer to say or make me feel good. Make me feel good, mommy. About what? The DLC and how they have characters locked and everything? I was going to say give me your opinion on it, but okay. Oh, okay. Well, I had to clarify for my own memory here. Um, I don't like it. I'll avoid it. Uh, if I can't, if there's a way to earn the character through ridiculous means or otherwise, I'm, okay, game facts, like, it's fine. I'll figure it out. I'll do it. But when they are like, no, no, you have to pay to get the character, I'm like, I guess I'm never going to play that character because you're a big bag of dicks. I'm not fucking doing it, man. You already pay how much for the goddamn game? And then the characters will be different fucking prices. Why? Yeah. Yeah, like one should be more like worthy of, of the other. One is worth more than the other. Whereas if you buy a physical uh, disc or digital, you will occasionally get like, oh, well, because we're such a great and giving system, you get this character for free. I'm like, that's not even, I, this is a new character I'm not fucking interested in. You're shoving a character I don't want down my fucking throat. Why can I not pick one? That I do like, that I am familiar with, you know, for the case of Guilty Gear. Oh yeah, did like, I, I mention that I one, of the characters, I like one of the characters is three to four dollars, and the other one is like seven? Yeah, like what the fuck? Is, no, no, I'm not doing it. Well, uh, I don't feel better. better that or I wait until way later when I've already forgotten about the game and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm buying shit and it'll show up. This character is free because of PlayStation Plus. I'm like, well, now I have the character. Okay. Wait until the game has, so, has been released for so long that when they're like, oh, 50% off special or whatever they have, they're giving them away for free, then yeah, that's the only way I'm getting it. I'm fucking buying an additional character when the game was 20? Get the fuck out. Not for seven. No. Not even for two. Has anyone else ever noticed that the DLC, when combined, no matter how cheap the game gets, is always three to four times the game's goddamn value? Yeah, like, I'm not even... I, I hate to even say this, but um, for Destiny 2, they had the season pack, like, the little passes and everything. You know, like, oh, then you get season passes Fucking for all the releases. But I remember, pass. I remember how much each expansion costed um, with, you know, the first Destiny. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it's not even worth it to only get the base game. And then, but I mean, you're still shelling out an extra 30 bucks. But if every expansion is 30, to, you know, $30 or more, then yeah, here's $90 for this fucking game. Why not? Better than paying for that shit in advance. And I guarantee you, there I it's probably gonna be like, well, okay, they're gonna do like twelve to fifteen dollars, enough to make me angry. Then be like, hmm, I saved maybe fifteen dollars overall. If I were saving like you know sixty, yeah, I wouldn't feel too bad about buying that season pass. But I don't know, we'll see. Uh, season passes. I know, I know, I fucking hate them, but at the same time, when you don't get them. Uh, like kick yourself in the ass later yeah and it's even worse with these tournament dumbasses and don't get me wrong not everyone who plays fighting game or plays them to no, make a never profit fuck again they i will never fucking do a tournament ever again the hell are you even talking about? you you were in a tournament yeah well i mean years and years ago i used to go to the uh guilty gear tournaments of course or tekken i'm sorry but... did you forget that you don't have a penis what? No. You, do you know how much <laughs> shit they fucking say to talk just to fuck with you? No, no, no. no. They, oh, yeah. Hey, don't even go there, man. You know me well enough, or rather, you remember me well enough to know I ain't like that. I'm saying the shit that they start, a lot of them do based on if they think you can or can't or won't whoop their ass in person. Not even to get you kicked out of the fucking tournament or something. But when you are a woman, it is 
Ooh, I can't even say 10 times worse. It's damn near 100. They will fuck with you on social media, make up accounts, and then they'll start saying all types of messed up shit. They didn't even start reining them bitches in until, you know, as per usual, corporations showed up. It wasn't uncommon to hear somebody say, I'm going to rape you in some sh in some way, shape, or form. Which, first off, that's not okay to say to any damn body. But you're going to say that to somebody or to the gender that you have a sexual affinity to. That, that shit is suspect. I don't care if you are a virgin or if you're really bad women or you have all the respect for women and all this bullshit. Point fucking blank, it's wrong. And all of them's like, ha, that's funny. Yeah, okay, well, hey, you can stay or go. We don't give a shit. No, nah, like, they treat them differently. And it, the only one that does, I've seen not get treated differently is guilty. And because guilty has a weird origin, and I don't mean weird as in something's wrong with her. I think there's some shit that I'm not, I don't understand or that everybody is not aware of. I think Guilty came into the fighting game community after a poison surgery, basically, if you catch my drift. So okay. I'm pretty sure Guilty, or hypothetically speaking, I haven't got a direct confirmation. I think at some point in time, Guilty was a dude. But not because, oh, I've heard opinions or heard rumors. No, I mean, I'm on Guilty's Twitter and I've met Guilty and been seeing Guilty for years She's always at Ace and Two. I've been seeing her for years. Uh, Guilty said that when her uncle died, <clears throat> she hopes she can be supportive and provide or just help and support her family whenever she needs to. And that her nieces and nephews love her as much as they did when she was their uncle. She said something like that. And I was like, the fuck? So that's why I'm like, eh. I mean, I, either way, I mean, what's with topic at hand? Uh, the women are generally mistreated when they try to go into a tournament or yes, participate. Yes. In gaming events. I yes, mean, even. Yes. You're uh, not wrong. You're yeah. not wrong because I have gotten those fucked up calls of we're going to come into your bed and we're going to fucking rape you. And I'm like, that's hilarious because I will fucking stab you to death. No, no, like, no, that's no, no. legitimate. First off, you, let that shit I'll happen when I'm after. around. Let that shit happen when I'm around. Won't be yeah, the reality is that I've lived my entire life being told or being played or just being talked down to in general, you know, like, oh, you have or OK, if I if I like football at all, I have to know every every fucking um, every player on every sport, what they did in their um, college career. Otherwise, they're like, oh, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. You're fucking stupid. So I can't like football because I don't know everything about every player. And the same applies to games. I have fucking weird strangers try to quiz me on fucking trivia shit that they don't even know. To see if I'm good enough. Look, if it's okay for so me funny. to even like what I like. And it's normal. It shouldn't be. But, you know, I've dealt with it. They're like, you like video games? I, I had like a Sega Genesis when I was four. Yeah, okay. of course I do. Okay, to some credit, to some credit. Seeing anybody of the opposite gender play video games isn't as common as women, not all of you, some women seem to think it is. And to be honest, sometimes when they say that, it's not an insult. For instance, I used to say that all the time. Well, not really, because I barely met any. I used to say that all the time when I met women around my age and shit who fucking played video games growing up. And I was genuinely happy and surprised about it. But immediately... Nine times out of ten, when I was around, I'd say just from nine to fourteen, they would go, "What? I can't play video games tomorrow because I'm a girl." I, I didn't say that. I was gonna ask you, like, do you like Chrono Trigger and what type of shit do you play? Oh, I see how it is. So because I'm a girl, I can't be good at video games, or my big brother has to come and do all the hard parts and shit for me. Fuck you. So then I just got tired of fucking asking <laughs> or trying to start a conversation about things we both might like, and stuck with the traditional shit with the. Sh was basically Power Rangers and Dragon Ball related. But Yeah, I, I, I do get it. I totally get where you're coming from, though, because I have seen other like other women react that badly, and I'm like, dude, you need to fucking call yeah. your tits a and minute. He's trying to see, like, hey, do you play this game? Me too. Cool. What's your fucking PSN? Yeah, should totally shit like break. that. Or then, you know, they're not going <laughs> to give you their PSN because, oh, you're trying to hit on them. I'm like, I'm sorry, sweetie, uh, but if there you are think... there are some people that that's just nailed into their head. I can't I can't do anything or say anything to sway their opinion and be like, not everyone is trying to get in your fucking pants. However, it is common where that usually is the scenario. 
So, I mean, when they jumped to that conclusion, I'm like, give, give it a minute before you verbally rape this man. Give him a minute. All right. Hear him out. Yeah, but that doesn't happen a lot in reality. So now I'm I'm damn near a middle aged man and I can literally, even though I'm sure there's hundreds, I can count on two hands all the women I know in my life that not so much play video games religiously, but play video games in general. And I don't mean cell phone games. I don't count those as video games. No, but me neither. I know <laughs> I know there has to be hundreds. But here's the thing, I've only asked a small amount for the simple fact that I don't want to go through that shit no more as a grown man because how to put this my tolerance based on this day and age and the fact that every minority or every type of minority is somewhat being targeted by someone or something no one is in invisible on the internet as they say I understand it but here's the problem when you start trying to make everybody the enemy and I have a problem no matter what your creed or ethnicity is and and I'm not going I'm not going to bullshit. I get called a traitor for it like religiously, but it doesn't bother me because the first thing I tell them is, "Okay, I'm a traitor. Okay, what 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 ethnicity am I a traitor to? What's my ethnicity? Black. Well, first off, black is an umbrella term like white. It's not actual fucking racist. They're placeholder names for people who don't know what the fuck their race is. Well, you don't know what part of Africa or if you how dark you are if you're from Africa. It's like, "Bitch, I'm a Creole. What's that? Google me. We're not just a fucking seasoning." So, then all yeah. of a sudden, and then and here's the one that really pisses me off about it. When motherfuckers say, "You made up Creole," I was like, literally, though, that's the that's a very easy way to start a fight with me. You telling me I uh, made up my own existence? Just that now. right there is pretty stupid. Clearly, that's, they uh, don't know much about Louisiana. Not even that. Like, do you not understand the concept of ethnic cleansing? That was one of the only. Kate Creoles only exists, well, not only, but one of the main reasons Creoles exist is because of one of the only peaceful, albeit fucked up, ethnic cleansings recorded in history. A king didn't want Arcadian, native Arcadians in Arcadia. So he said, hey, get the fuck out. Now, of course, you know, they were going to have to face some type of either enslavement, indentured servitude and whatnot if they decided to stay or death if they fought back. But a lot of them just straight up left. And at the time, one of the places they went was fucking what became Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So, so the Arcadians, I think what you're describing then as a mass ethnic migration, not a cleansing. Forced ethnic migration, but it was because yes. he wanted to forced. cleanse. Sorry. Forced ethnic forced migration ethnic. because he wanted yeah. to cleanse the area, the Arcadian area. So these Arcadians came down to Cajun town and they literally became Cajuns. And even then, they were just marrying and being with any race down there that wouldn't treat them like shit. Mind you, obviously, uh, there were some races that got preferential treatment due to certain skin tones. But the thing is, is that Louisiana has been mixed race before America was even America. Uh -huh. The Chinese yep. have been here also either a due to forced immigration or lying about work to the point where it's damn near indentured slave -titude for almost since like the early 1800s. Or in uh, the middle 1700s. Like, it's not uncommon. It was never uncommon for America to be mixed. What's uncommon is how we perceive it now. But that's only because a lot of people go on what old people taught them. And old people, even if they weren't racist, there were just things you didn't know you couldn't, could and could not do. That's why I tell any of my white friends I go hang out with, or if I'm going to that place, I don't care how racist you aren't, or how racist you think your parents aren't. If there is someone over 60 in this motherfucker, let me know now. Because if they say the wrong thing, it's not going to be, oh, you adorable, racially insensitive bastard. What? I'm not racist. I didn't call you racist. I said you're racially insensitive. The word that you never want to see on TV because it's not as popular as blatantly calling someone racist. And then yep. there are those who know, don't give a shit, and their kids don't register the shit because they think they're harmless. No, bitch, they're not. They're Trump supporters. Trump supporters are not harmless, no matter if they are or are not racist, because they're supporting fuckery to other ethnicities and minorities and when oh you, yeah and when you support that type of shit you are guilty by association because you are willfully associating this isn't a oh i didn't know any better situation no no you knew he had no political training and you could google how successful his businesses are pro tip damn near none of them literally damn near none of them damn near all of them fail he just keeps getting money from dumbass banks he had the most money in his career when his dad died the first year. 
He's never actually been worth a billion. And he keeps trying to sue people over it and he loses. This is a man who's lost over a thousand lawsuits. I'm not even joking. Oh, Google it. I know. Not even Google it. TYT it. I'm going to start saying that. The Young Turks. I should put a link to their ass up in this bitch, but... And that's enough of the political side of things. But long story short, yeah, there's a lot of issues associated with, you know, just proper treatment. And unfortunately, the fighting game community uh, condones a lot of the bullshit. And they'll even go and befriend some people who are assholes. And my personal favorite, and I won't say only Caucasian people do this, and I wish people stopped saying it. Some people pick who they hang out with, excuse me, based on how they treat them, not what type of person they are, which is fucking stupid. And I'm going to tell you why. Because what if a neo-Nazi treats you like you're the love of his life and he'd do anything and everything to be with you and you work for, I don't know, the Peace Corps? Conflict much? But he's nice to me. No, no, that doesn't make any of the shit okay. What you're doing is trying to put a Band-Aid on top of a broken dam. You're not fixing well, they're trying, shit. They're trying to justify walking away from conflict because they don't have it in them to stand up for the things that they supposedly believe in. So, I, I sometimes they're just straight up that. stupid. And I'll and I shit you not. One of my oldest friends, and uh, Matt, I believe you might have met him and you won't believe it, but you might figure out who it is. I said, uh, and one of my oldest friends, uh, Matt, you might know him or at least figure out who I'm talking about. I have a friend who tried to justify voting for Trump by telling me he's a businessman and countries are a business. This is the same guy uh, who hates racism and is marrying an African African. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I mean, she's literally from African and is an immigrant. This Caucasian male with two master degrees or a bachelor and a master in two different fields and is writing a book that's being published or possibly being published by the same company that published the first or the second uh, Song of Ice and Fire book. Huh. Yeah. Um, I don't quite recall who you're talking about. Well, look, yeah. I'll tell you this. His first name is John, but I know that's kind of ambiguous because that's the most generic name in this damn country, which isn't even John American. Johnson. I didn't say Johnson. Yeah. I said John. No, I know. I'm literally saying John Johnson. Most fucking generic name. <laughs> no, to but yeah, his fucking... first name is John, though. Um, that wasn't a joke. Uh. And fucking... And I asked him about this shit. I was like, that was his reasoning. I was like, you're serious right now. But then I stopped thinking about it. This is the same guy who befriended two fucking pedophiles. Well, let me phrase that. Two unregistered <laughs> sex offenders. Unregistered sex offenders. Oh, jeez. I think I know the two that you're talking about. Yeah, the really, really, really fucking tall John. Yeah. Befriended an unregistered sex offender because he treats him nice. So, I know that it's not common knowledge to be taught, one, dignity and self-respect, and two, I know it's not common knowledge to pick your friends based on how they act, not how they treat you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I don't care if I lose a thousand friends tomorrow, I'd rather have one good one than a thousand fucking garbage ones that'll sell me out or all this other shit, that being said. You sell my ass out, uh, yeah, you're not going to get away with it. Also, that being said, ain't much to sell out. Nine times out of ten, people just say I have a secret about something when really just the motherfucker I do or do not like didn't ask me. And no one asked me until recently. Yeah. I say that all the time. Like, no, it's not. What I'm saying is not a secret. Y'all just didn't ask until now. Or he's never asked because they already know. I've seen them do yada, 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 yada. But I digress. So basically, uh, to get back on point, we need to do better. And in fact, you know what? We might put that on. We're going to probably put, possibly put that on the back burner too, uh, Matt. Uh, what can be done to create fair treatment slash fair punishment? Not to mention, this even become a problem with uh, Overwatch. Like one of the producers or directors even said, like, look, there's a lot of stuff we can do and we put on the back burner just because we had to spend so much time like moderating and getting rid of shitty people not hackers just shitty people mm -hmm. he said we got new maps on the back burner new characters character shorts but we gotta fucking deal with these people first so now they're trying to institute or upgrade their ban policies 
to where almost every certain things on their first defense are perma bands. Now I don't know what you know about a Blizzard perma ban, but you got to change your fucking internet service provider, and you have yeah. to change your copy of the game. That's how you do it. That's the only way. And even then, I think they patched that some time ago. I haven't looked into it. Uh, but I thought it was interesting the depths that they were going to for this shit. I was like, you go, Blizzard. It sucks you have to go that far, but damn. Because, like, yeah. what if it's one person in the house, one person, but, like, there's three people with an account? Well, Somebody going to get their ass beat. Just yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, if people are share, if one person sharing an account with others, then uh, don't do things that might get your account uh, blocked from something. Like, you know, abandoning too many uh, competitive games and then getting just... The Blizzard says, okay, you're banned from competitive, this competitive season. Which, man, I, I give them props for doing that. That was a really good idea. Though I'm sure people will disagree with me, and they're free to do so, but I don't care. <laughs> well, personally, um, just to give my two cents, because we got off because of Raven, but you know what? Going on tangents is never a bad thing here. Um, I feel I like... I went off topic? Ooh. No, 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 I'm saying you triggered why we went off topic. But, uh, my bad. Uh, no, no, I already told you. It's not a bad thing here. That's, that's how we fill time. My goal you know, is usually to only fit 40 minutes, but people keep interest enough to where we damn near usually get close to an hour. Which is exactly what happened. But that aside, my whole thing is just that I'm saying, I want to give my two cents before I forget again. Okay, so the way I look at the shit is pretty, I know it's boring, but it's pretty simple. I think it's possible that we don't get a paywall on everything. But the problem is, is that there are a lot of people who don't think when it comes to purchasing DLC. And I've talked to them. It's not just kids trying to bug their parents. No, 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 no. Far from it. In fact, here's what I've noticed. And this is going to trip y'all out, I promise you. A lot of people, if they like the game, are just getting the season pass. And when they get the season pass, they have already just gotten the DLC. So they don't even know what will be in it. Some games don't even finish what's in the deal, the season pass, and will sell the game and will sell it to you. <coughs> Batman uh, games. <coughs> yep. So, oh, yeah. so, I think that it has to come down to the, the 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 game developer versus the corporate aspect. Corporate aspect is always going to say we need to get as much money as quickly as possible. Blah 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 blah. I know that, but here's the thing: just w tell them that. Okay, you want us to make how many DLCs or how much you want the DLC to be valued. Make something you feel is equivalent to that that isn't extremely important shit. I mean, don't do the Mass Effect 2 thing. Make the actual ending of the game something you have to fucking pay for. That was total bullshit. The actual oh, end of yeah. the game, you have to pay for it in Mass Effect 2. And here's the part that really pissed me off. I came into Mass Effect late. So I got the game of the quote-unquote year edition, which literally means nothing. I don't know why they title shit like that. Of Mass Effect 2, it still doesn't come with that shit. It wow. still doesn't. That's EA for ya. Brunts. So, <laughs> what ends up happening, uh, what ended up happening, what I think should end up happening is, it should be cosmetic shit. Because first off, that can get you a lot of fucking money and it doesn't harm anything. Especially if you make them limited release. Obviously, they won't be limited release if you do the DLC choice of things. And you can still get away with a season pass, but it's only for a cosmetic bullshit. Dead or Alive 5, which I'm sure... Uh, I know this is before you came on, Matt, but... Everybody lost their minds when I told them about the Dead or, Dead or Alive 5 uh, DLC. Because the Dead or Alive 5 DLC, and this is a year ago... The value of the Dead or Alive DLC at the time... If you got it all, you can buy a PlayStation 4 Pro the game and the vr headset and still have enough for a fucking tv the dlc before taxes was valued at over a thousand fucking dollars the game cost 30. what game dead or alive five but here's the thing they had five season passes and guess what all their season passes cost more than the game when it was fucking new when the oh. game was new 
no, 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 no. That's not the best part. They got three more season passes since then. They had five season passes at the time, right? Five. Now, they have fucking, if memory serves, they're on Deezen Pass, uh, Deezen Pass, Season Pass <laughs> 7. Season Pass 7. Oh, and then to top what? it off. Is all they just costumes? Yes. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Three characters and the rest are costumes. And here's my favorite part. I don't know if you know this, Matt, but guess what's on sale this month? And ironically, Raven was talking about earlier. Uh... DLC for Dead or Alive 5. Guess what? They made three versions of Dead or Alive 5 till they decided to say fuck it. Dead or Alive 5, Dead or Alive 5 Plus, Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate, then Dead or Alive 5 Last Round. Okay. Dead or Alive 5 Last Round, the most recent version, and the last version of 5 at least. It does not contain all of the costumes from the Ultimate version of the game. But guess what? You can get 50% off all the costumes from the Ultimate game, which came out in 2015. Now, guess how much it is at 50% off? $46.49 for costumes that were already in a previous version of the game, which now cost about $15 physically. The normal price of this DLC package, which is, again, all costumes, $92.99. Meaning that this DLC for an older iteration of the game cost more than the newest version of the game. Uh. Oh, and did I mention there's a microtransaction version of Dead or Alive 5? Oh, good. <laughs> now you and your friends can play Dead or Alive 5 Core Fighter Edition, where literally you pay for everything except for one fucking character you're using. You want to play story mode? $15.99. You want to unlock a character permanently? $3.99. You can still play online and fight other characters that you can't fucking train or practice again because you only got one character. You can still do arcade and team mode, where again, same situation. But if you want the full package, oh, bro, that's $49.99. And it don't come with none of the season pass DLC. The stupid hurt. And guess what? It's free to download. What was that, Raven? First blowjob free? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Fan fucking tastic. Like, I can't sleep at night knowing <laughs> that this is one of the few fighting games that I get master level at. And I don't mean master level as in, oh, I feel like I can do a lot of damage with my characters and arrogant. No, I mean like I've fought never, people never that was a fan of it. I, I, I mean, I fought people that were MLG, didn't even know they were MLG. And my whole thing was basically just that eh, I, I just want to I just wanted to play people. And lo and fucking behold, what happens? They lose their goddamn minds with this money. It's like Koei Tecmo didn't know how to make money at all. So they just think that shit, if we do this, we can get away with everything and you know my favorite part the really stupid part that everyone thinks they think that their money goes back to the goddamn developers and the programmers and the coders no how else are they going to fund the next dynasty warriors <laughs> oh yeah because you know <laughs> dynasty warriors <laughs> is such a technical game oh the ai is just so smart so good i'm gonna go on mute for a second so, my whole thing is just that there's a good way and a bad way to do it. I believe that it can be done. The problem is someone has to step forward who's popular and do it. Because right now, the only people looking like they're doing it even close to right is King of Fighters. Ironically, the last horse to cross the finish line. Because King of Fighters had everybody ready for the game at release. And they had alternate costumes coming. But here's the thing. They did make new characters because people wanted them to make new characters. They didn't finish these characters in advance. They just decided we want to make these characters or possibly make these characters. And we ain't got enough time. They're going to have to be DLC. Unless people want to wait till King of Fighters 15. Which they didn't. But at the same time, that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, here's my problem with their bullshit. They picked characters that were franchise mainstays. Much like fucking Guilty Gear. And made them DLC. 
Rock that Howard. Rock Howard. I don't even like uh, King of Fighters that much. I know like six characters. Rock Howard is in like 90% of the games. And he's DLC in game 14? Really, nigga? That's your name. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, they actually made a coherent package. And even if you don't have Rock, hey, you're doing pretty decent. However, I think he's like seven bucks. So, yeah, that's all types of crazy. But and only, but what gets me is that this is supposed to be a celebration and them being grateful to all the other fighting games that led up to them. Because as I've stated, they're going to gouge for it. <laughs> yeah, as I've stated a couple times, even though this is their anniversary title, I don't know how many anniversaries they're on at this point. But all the 3D fighting games that you know and love where that got popular, they're all using Sega's Virtual Fighter 5 engine as a base. So Tekken, Soul Calibur, Dead or Alive. And somebody I'm forgetting and can't think of. They're all using Virtual Fighters base 3D fighting game in because Sega was the first people to, well, really get it right, you know? Mm -hmm. So, as an added bonus, which everyone thought was cool and got them more attention, there's about four uh, Virtual Fighter characters that are actually in and function like DOA characters in DOA, and they're not even DLC, which is huh. beautiful. Because first off, no one ever crosses over with Virtual Fighter. Which I've always thought was weird. Because they're the grandfather. They're the daddy's daddy of 3D fighting games. Mm -hmm. So, mind you, here's the thing. No, they only got like... They themselves have like maybe 10 costumes. Everybody else, especially, you know, the, the illegal children pedo characters... Got damn near 50. And I'm not even saying that as a joke. I'm, I popped in Dead or Alive 5 and I'm looking right now. Ayane, one of the most popular characters in the franchise, who's also technically not an adult, has 48 costumes. 48. That's kind of ridiculous. Now, guess how many Elliot got? Please say two. 20. <laughs> in fact, he's a guy. If you're not Ryu Hayabusa, star of Ninja Gaiden, or Hayate, also a ninja, you probably have less than 20 costumes. Oh, and then they added in a new feature last year. Taunt explosions. Anybody want to guess what that does? Troy's clothing? Yes, but it can also be used to make you transform, or that's what they actually use it for. So if you do a character's taunt, their clothing explodes and they go into a Super Sentai type of hero mode. It doesn't change okay. what they do. It doesn't change what they do, but you see, get to see their regular humanoid clothing explode off and they get a Super Sentai Power Ranger type uh, outfit. Now, that's cool. And to be honest, I'd like it if a lot of fighting games had that. Can you hear uh, me now? That's just silly. Raven, can you hear me? <laughs> I've never heard you laugh like that. <laughs> Okay, well, well let me you tell you. What... Earlier, that's what I heard. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you caught the whole thing, though, right? Yeah, yeah. You just uh, it cut out like right. I still have no fucking clue what you actually said. Okay, so long story <laughs> short, like, last year, oh. Dead or Alive Five released outfits <laughs> that have a Power Ranger style transformation that is triggered by taunt explosions. You okay. activate, okay. you activate oh. your character's taunt. <laughs> Their regular clothing explodes off them, and under that is a Power Ranger outfit that teleports out of nowhere. Oh, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> now, like, you have to understand, I heard, like, I caught all of that. Like, I stopped, I, I fucking sat up straight, and I'm like, what the fuck? Butt explosions? I'm like, what do they do? Like, bend over and fucking blast their fucking enemy to death? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? I wouldn't know because I haven't played that game. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, first off, that's that's a really new addition. Oh. To my knowledge, it hasn't been in any fighting game at all. Well, here's an example of it right here. I'm going to hit the play button. Oh, okay. Y'all see the link? I mean, I'm, I'm playing it, but I'm, I'm like, my audio for that is uh, uh, Oh, no, it's Kasumi. She's a normal schoolgirl. Boom, see it? Okay. Oh, 
God damn, how many times do you also cut a bitch? Well, uh, tension, I guess. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that Her shit. Her entire skill set is like a lot of it reminds me so much of fucking Tekken. Well, it the should. The outfit and everything. Oh, yeah. and she turns back to normal at the end. Well, no, she yeah, did her taunt right? again. When you do the uh, taunts, the transform outfits, they don't do anything. It's yeah. completely cosmetic. But see, shit like that, I would pay for that because, first off, there's genuinely no fighting game where you can just change outfits in a fight. That's true. That's false. I mean, it's not worth paying money for. I mean, it's pretty pretty funny to look at. But... Like I said, it's cosmetic, oh, but that's okay. Yeah. But yeah. And, and and here's the thing, it not all like the characters can do it. Money. Only like seven other characters can do it. Guess which oh. seven? The seven most popular. Oh no, didn't see that coming. Anyways. Yeah. Uh I think they call it the Schoolgirl Strikers collection. Of of all things. <sighs> now remember, this wow, is Wow, that's not a fetish waiting to happen. Oh wait. <laughs> now let's remember, this is the same company that said Please don't make shitty nude mods or nasty mods for our game on the I PC version. Wow. And I was like, do you not know how the internet works? Or rather, do you not understand what type of games you make? You were not yeah. making a fighting game sure <laughs> because you wanted to make the best or a most premium 3D fighting game ever. You're making a fighting game and your primary sales incentive is smut. So don't bullshit. But at the same time, this is also Japan. They could literally be so fucking stupid that they don't realize. Because I, I don't know, I don't know what y'all doing. Don't know about sex laws or just common sense in Japan. But uh, creep factor alarm. You've been warned. <laughs> they didn't get coherent sex laws until 1999. I mean, I'm not surprised. And on top of it. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of uh, Nikki Glaser, and she's like, it's like reluctant porn. No, I don't want to. Okay. That is their entire industry of, please don't do this. Okay. <laughs> like, they're, like, low-key, like, all about it. Okay, well, I don't know who Nikki Glaser is. But anyways, um, basically, fucking, even in 1999, here's one of the things that was already going out. Every single prefecture has in place... Uh, normal civilized laws when it comes to sexual acts basically kind of sort of normalized across the board which is like uh, 16 or 17 uh, 17 to 18 and up or 16 and 18 and up you can be sexually active at 13 however most people or the few that are actually sexually active at that young age they're not doing it with adults they're doing it with other aged people you know, people on their age breath. Yeah, a bunch of fourteen-year-olds humping, like Nebraska. I don't, uh, I don't even want to know about Nebraska. I keep hearing terrible dude, things. Not, hey, hey, I, I said I don't want to know. I said no, I don't. What you need to know is that there's nothing but corn, and they have nothing else better to do but hump. That coming okay. from a coworker of mine who's from there. Look, I don't want to know. I've heard of many, Just many. Confirm. Yeah. Two places, and I said I don't want to be. The two well, places I've like heard the most shit about, ironically, are Nebraska and Oklahoma, and I learned not to ask lesson, uh, ask questions. That being said, so back what I was trying to say, um, their laws on the on what will be the government level or prefecture level state. Basically, look, you even look at a child wrong, that's your ass. And even if you try to do this shit, you need permission from the parents. Guess what? You're not really gonna fucking get, and you could even get locked up for asking. Mind you, it won't be a long sentence, and you don't get put on a registration list, which, that baffles me. But, the thing is, is that, on a federal level, 13 is the age of consent, but it's not on the government level. So, it's one of those cases where the government is out of sync with the people. But at the same time, uh, no one's really bringing it up to the government. Obviously, there's sexual misconduct and sexual mistreatment or gender mistreatment. That gets brought up, but... Genuine child fucking doesn't. But the main reasoning is because, first off, a lot of kids ain't trying to fuck no old man. Like, On top of it, I mean, their entire culture is very stigmatized and, um, you know, shame and humiliation. I mean, think of it this way. You can get an indecent exposure charge, be um, called a sexual, be registered as um, a sexual predator, 
in the United States. Now, if that were to apply to Japan, you're basically giving somebody a death sentence where that's how they are. They have a high rate of suicide because, you know, shame and humiliation are there's it's so deep rooted also in being their overworked culture literally being overworked. being overworked yeah. yeah these people are overworked to fucking like, work i feel that. i mean I literally I mean. that there was this one but if woman, you can imagine she had a hundred hour work week i felt so bad she had a literal hundred hour work week it frightened me because i know well we all know just when it comes to a job your work week isn't just what's on paper it's also literally transit so if she had a hundred hour work week, that means that that includes her transit time. So yeah, how do, how, it's fucking wrong on so many levels. I agree. She and then you have it? places like Germany, like once they're like, nope, I'm done. They can have a line all the way out the door. Once they hit like their five o'clock mark, they're they're done. Bye. There's yeah. no finishing the line. They fucking, clock the fuck out. Dude, France's retirement, uh, our, our average, I think it was France or some one of the European countries, their average retirement age is close to 50. Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm like, they're trying to push, they tried to push our retirement age back in the late 90s, early 2000s to like oh. 67 or 68. They're trying to push it back again. Are you Good luck. Yeah, like seriously, come on, come on, big business. Let's use some common sense. If you want human beings, no, they don't want human beings, but you can only get for now human beings to work and make or do your shit. So let me ask you something. If we all say fuck it, are you really gonna try to push this bullshit on us? Look what happened with that uh mechanic strike that went on. Oh, we'll just find somebody else. And then all the mechanics went in front of their business because it is legal. And they striked in front of their business and told them all what's going on. And they was losing business by the truckloads, no pun intended, that time. Until they caved uh, about yesterday or the day before yesterday. That shit happened so fast, I didn't even learn what the strike was about till it was damn near over. I'm not even saying it as a joke either. So I was just like, yeah, I know. So I was like, what the fuck were they doing? Oh, it turns out that they were overcharging for repairs and maintenance, but they weren't, they were, and they were making profit off of it. Now, technically nothing wrong and that's not illegal. The problem, holy shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right. Breaking news in the world of dead or alive. Um, I hope you guys are all on the toilet because you about to shit yourself they made a new bundle today or the or, or around to or around this first week of uh september that includes 77 fucking costumes <laughs> valued at 41 dollars and 95 god damn cents uh Uh, 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 whatever. Here, wait, wait, wait! Here's my favorite part. Here's my favorite part. The season, the season pass for season seven, which is the most current season, cost twice as much as the costume pack with seventy-seven. Huh? And their reasoning to charge seventy-four dollars and forty-nine cents is because. Well, this season pass also includes every costume that came out in August, October, and December. I don't know why the fuck I just cannot hear you. Okay, I turned the volume up. Did that help? Yeah, no, it just like all the audio was completely cut. Like I just didn't hear shit. Well, it might be my decibel level shot up too high, but no, I was just saying that. I told them about they just released a fucking new bundle on Dead or Alive 5 today and one last yeah. week. One, the one for 77 outfits is $41. And no, you can't cherry pick those outfits. And then there's the new season pass that just came out last week. Oh, and this is buying it that they're making it. Look, again, you again, already know the answer for, to that question. Don't uh-huh. think about it and don't visualize. Now, this. You have my condolences. I apologize for my gender. This is my gender's fault, and this is only happening because of my gender. I'm not even going to bullshit. But the Dead or Alive 
last round, season pass number fucking seven, cost more than the 77 outfit bundle by almost twice. The season pass for season seven is $74.49 fucking cents. And it includes 105 costumes, but it doesn't mean shit because they don't do anything. <laughs> and then some of them, some of them, or the exclusive outfits, sometimes they're just a recolor or a retexturing to make them look different. Case in point, the exclusive outfit you get with Season Pass 7 of Dead or Alive 5 last round includes gold Kasumi and gold Ayane Ninja Gaiden 3 outfits. Oh, you mean Ninja Gaiden 3? That game that came out in 2013, the same day the fucking Wii U did? Oh, I get a gold version of those outfits that are 14, 15, 16, 17, four and a half fucking years old, not to mention fucking goddamn Kasumi literally was DLC in the first place. Also, the one of the only times they did DLC right. All the DLC for, De for Ninja Gaiden 3 on the Wii U was fucking free. How much sense does that make? All the DLC, free. But then you jump to five, you spending over $1,200. That's Bruno Mars center stage, center row tickets right there. Yeah, 24 karat action, because you got some gold outfits and you basically pay for the outfits in fucking gold. Ooh, gold ninjas. That defeats the purpose of a ninja suit. You're not supposed to be easily recognizable or reflect light. Believe it. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I had to. Oh, you. man, that was funny. No, I cannot hate. I congratulate. <laughs> that shit was funny. And here's what I found hilarious. You can actually see in your country people who buy this and rate it. 11 people have bought it. So it looks like I'm not the only person and they've lost their fucking mind train. Oh, I fucking hate people. 11 people oh, have wow. bought it. So that's 70, wait, 74, 49 times 11. Okay, somebody do that math. But basically, that to me feels like you could buy a PS4 Pro and this game for that much. By the way, no PS4 Pro option with this game. Isn't that hilarious? I could buy a sandwich. What sandwich you buying that cost seventy four forty nine times eleven? Goddamn woman. Fucking beautiful one. Hmm. I might be hungry. <laughs> you are hungry, but we're close to wrapping up. Uh, I, I'm I'm surprised you aren't hungry for that wedding ring. But that's another story for another time. Anyways. Yeah. I am kind of curious. I do want someone to do the math to that calculation, though. I know that sounds kind of uh. dickish. I know that no. sounds dickish. Y'all got no. calculators. I'm playing Spider Solitaire. <laughs> I hate Solitaire. With a flaming oh, fucking passion. When my uh, mother... Okay. When Spider! My mo solitaire when my, is different. I don't know it's not. It's Solitaire. When my mother plays slash touches any electronic device, I sneak and get the device from her, and I find out how to delete slash remove solitaire anything from it. I am not joking. I fucking hate that shit. Okay. Probably shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> you have now given someone, uh, or many people, <laughs> knowledge of one of the weaknesses. It's you not really a weakness solitaire. so much as a hate boner. My one true weakness is my fucking neck and my shins. But, uh, no, uh, sorry, my, uh, yeah, my, um, shin bones and my neck are my one true weakness. I can't wait to Photoshop you playing solitaire in the most You are not shirt. going to do that. Do it. Shut I up. Mean, do it. Shut up, Matt. I might. No, you do won't. It. Shut up. You are not going to do that, and I'm going to tell you why you're not going to do that, because I am going to use my one freebie that we both gave each other back in 2012, and I'm going to invoke my freebie right now, and you are not going to do that ever. That Fine. being that hey, being said, you do, do still. It anyway. No, it's a freebie. You don't violate the friend freebie rule. It's like it's like a doctor's oath, damn near. Yeah, now, yeah. That being said, you still have three freebies that you can utilize at any point in time, as long as it doesn't involve me assassinating someone in public. Oh, there goes my idea for Trump. 
I said public. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like the way you think. Dude, that's 90% of the yeah, reason why she... you want to get on that behind closed doors, I'll buy you a sandwich. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I kind of want to give her $74 and watch her make a sandwich just to see what happens. Oh, my God. What the fuck? No. What? What? Oh! Are we up to like 85 season, people that have bought it? Season pass 7 is with tax basically $80. So why is season pass 3 $92? Oh my god. Every time I scroll, I piss myself off. I like, I piss myself off every time I fucking scroll. I should stop um, scrolling. Probably. I can't. But, uh, I fucking can't. They, they, they're now including another crossover character. Which, I'm surprised she wasn't in the game earlier. How many ninjas you know in King of Fighters? Wow. Yep. My shit Yep. She is now in this fucking game as a fully playable character. Uh, well, okay. like, she's got the bouncy T-Tops yes. going. Yes. She's got the bouncy boobs. I, f I feel like somehow my Shiranui was the concept art for every single fucking ninja character in this game. Duh. Probably, and on top of it, I remember when uh, my buddy had the Japanese version, and then he had the American version, and like they downgraded the jiggle quality for the American audience. Not, not that they covered them up at all, and not that they still didn't jiggle. But the ferocity of the jiggling was uh, humanoid. <laughs> it looked humanoid. Ferocity? I, I, no, 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 no. She's she's straight up right. I promise you, she is right. She's going by the fucking actual common sense. They didn't do it because they wanted to maintain a rating. They did it because it was to the point where it didn't make sense, and people would genuinely ask them, "Hey, um, is this programmed right?" Because they were somehow independent of each other. But not independent in the sense that they would move in different directions if they were pushed or pulled or bouncing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were literally like, uh, doing things that didn't make sense for a human body part. At all. Also, all these breast phases, but yet no one ever puts in ball sack physics. You know that's some sexy shit. Uh, uh, I didn't say picture it. Why do you want that? I, did, I don't. I'm just pointing out that they don't do it. Well, yeah, because you don't have jiggling ball sack in a fighting game. Like, you would yeah, have, you like, one titty up here, one titty down there. Dude, like, yeah, they do. You and, like, and then they would, like, they would jiggle and switch. They would just go up and down, opposite of one another. I don't know about you, but I personally know. I don't know how the fuck I could ever make my body do that without a bra with one. Like, there's no fucking way without, like, manually moving them. But Magic. But literally just... Bouncing around, I've never seen boobies just boop 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 like opposite. Like a, like a, like a I've never seen boobies boop 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, oh man, that that made my day right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna well I'm almost to a point where we can do a highlight reel for the podcast. I'm putting that shit on there. I never I don't know how boobies can just go boop 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 boop. boop. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, oh man! Uh, That's uh, what they would do. Look at them. They go blah 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 blah. They, they <laughs> what do. the fuck? Where are you getting these sounds for boobs from? You have them in front of you. You've never heard them make that noise. No, they don't. But I mean, I feel like you could find an anime or two or fucking ten. Well, million, yeah, yeah. Where well, they do give sound effects to boobs going wish, 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 wish. Oh yeah, it all and it does. It always sounds like a jug of something. Yeah, and like. <laughs> what happening. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I I seriously I want to go to her house now and record her talking about shit with visuals just because I know something fucked up is gonna happen now. Oh my god. And then and then the other and dude, then they both weird. go up here. They both go up here once they start to settle. Uh, uh, why does she then they think land. we can see what then she's they doing? Land. Then they land like that. 
you you know oh okay i see what you're doing i feel people who have hook boob though <sighs> poor hook if, boobs. if i'm making any sense here and i doubt it but i mean i tried i tried <laughs> i think i'm i think i'm genuinely gonna i'm gonna enjoy making footage for this you know what's how fucked up would it be if i decided to eat for this podcast i'm just gonna do a bunch of dead or alive footage in the background oh man that'd be a dick move Anyways, all right. Well, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it. Uh, Matt, did you go? I don't know. We kind of went on a booby tangent. No, I'm still here. No, I mean, like, did you state your piece on paywalls? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. It, okay. Raven, it's did going you... going to happen. Yeah. Raven, regardless. Raven, did you state your piece? On what? On paywalls. Did you state your shit? I don't even remember. Okay. Do you, do you want to state your shit now before we go? Okay, the question was, do you think there will ever be a point in fighting games future where important stuff or stuff that we commonly utilize in fight, fighting games now won't be behind a paywall? Oh, yeah, no, I think fucked on that one. They found out how to make money with the least amount of effort, no fucking need for additional advertisement. All you have to do is, you can't play this character until you pay for them. Okay, I'll pay for that. No, it's too fucking easy. People are stupid. We're never going to have good things again. Well, I'd like to thank you, one, for crushing my hopes and dreams. Um, two, building them back up with your boob-based satire. And three, for uh, being a new challenger slash member to the Token Games podcast family. Uh, as per usual, I'm going to tell you like I tell everybody, if you decide to become a customer of ours because we're on amazon like everybody else and their mom these days um anything you ask for will automatically come with a free discount of rush delivery and during your month birthday month yeah you, know, you automatically get a 10 percent off on anything you decide to order or want us to quote unquote acquire for you because we also get games that will say don't always just come from one country if you catch my drift so yeah um we appreciate you, and we're glad you're here, mainly because we ran out of females. We didn't scare them away. They just all had shit to do. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. And, uh, okay, uh, officer, you got any closing statements? Um, eh. You're just not going to let it go, are you? <laughs> you can't see it right now, but I'm grinning. I know you're grinning. Raven, do you have any closing statements? Not really. I mean, hopefully I can be invited to do this again. You're automatically always invited. You're in the channel. Um, Yeah, that's not a temporary thing. You stay in the channel. And as far as me, I just like to say at the end, oh my God, you did not just mean me. Your laugh is just like all over the place. You never have a consistent laugh. No, I don't. I just like to take this time and say, titties go boom, 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 boom. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, this has been another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I will see you guys when I see you guys.